The Sephora savings event has finally begun. I'm saying finally because people have been waiting for this day to come since the beginning of 2024. They're excited to get their favorite products for less money, and that's completely understandable. The thing is, I've been thinking about how Sephora tricks its customers to buy more than they actually need, and this event just encouraged me to work on this particular video because it kind of proves my point, am I right? But well, I don't think it's enough to rest my case here. So I did some digging and realized that this anticipated event is just the tip of the iceberg, and Sephora has a few other strategies to make its customers spend more. I think these strategies are worth discussing because I believe we all need to be conscious while spending our money. So if you're ready, what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Let's start with this event, shall we? For those who don't know, Sephora has a loyalty program and there are three levels. The first one is Insider and it's completely free. The second one is VIB and you have to spend $350 in a year to achieve that. Finally, the last one is Rouge, which means you have to spend $1,000 in a year. As you would imagine, there are a few perks and incentives depending on your tier, such as exclusive events, first access to products, exclusive gifts, and rewards. This system makes the customer know that if they spend enough, they will be able to have access to certain perks and they will be rewarded eventually. It's actually a great encouragement if you ask me. The company wants your money and your loyalty, and it gives you the chance to buy a few products for less money every now and then. The thing is, I've seen numerous articles about this event and realized that most of them say that this is the perfect time to restock your favorite products. And that made me think a lot. Yes, buying something you need for less money sounds charming. I'm not here to deny that. But I just can't get used to the idea of restocking. It's been all over TikTok and Instagram. We've been seeing people filming restocking videos, whether it's cleaning products, groceries, or skincare products. That's a perfect example of how consumerism dominates our lives in the worst way possible. But anyways, I already made a video about restocking. I'll leave the link in the description box if you're interested. Now, back to the topic. What I'm trying to say here is this. I know this event sounds great, but try not to fall for it. Of course, get whatever you need or want, but my suggestion would be to stay away from restocking and buying more than you need since it's not as logical as it seems. You can always change your idea about a product or you might wanna try new things instead of using the same thing over and over again. Now, this event aside, there are a few other strategies of Sephora to make you buy more. Let's continue with the most obvious one, then things will get a bit interesting. If you're a loyal customer of Sephora, you probably ran into at least one rude Sephora worker while consulting which product to buy, or just window shopping. Sadly, they're inevitable and they're the toxic reality of Sephora. But beyond that, I've read multiple stories where people went to Sephora and felt humiliated because of the worker's attitude. They felt as if they can't afford what they're looking for. So what did they do? Did they leave the store? Nah, you wish. Instead, they felt the urge to prove themselves and ended up buying the product. I mean, it's not the ideal way to encourage people to buy more, but well, as you can see, reverse psychology works like a charm on certain people. Commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big. Huge. I have to go shopping now. I'm not sure if Sephora asked its workers to do that or the workers themselves came up with this idea, but I can say that there are such stories out there and honestly, it's frustrating. I'm not saying this because I think I'm better than anyone, but I would never purchase a product just to prove myself, especially if a worker decides to be rude while I ask for help. That's a big no for me. What would you do though? Another thing I should mention is the testers for sure. If there weren't any testers, you would get bored easily and you wouldn't spend more than five minutes in the store. But with testers, you can try the products even when you're not planning to buy or that are way higher than your budget. It's actually about perfecting the experience you have in store. It's fun, keeps you busy, and you get to see how the products really are. It clears all the question marks you have because you actually get to see how it looks on your skin. The thing is, the more you spend your time in a Sephora store, the more you feel the urge to buy something, whether it's the product you tried or something else. You know what, that's actually brilliant too. Because while the customer is able to try before buying, the company sells more since it creates a hook effect on people. It's a win-win situation here. But well, if you're not careful, it's not actually a win for your bank account. Just saying. P.S. This is actually why I avoid trying the products I know I'll probably love, but won't be able to afford. Ignorance is bliss sometimes. Okay now, you survived the Sephora worker who tried to manipulate you and the charm of testers, and you only got the product you needed and headed to the register. You're waiting in line, what's next? Mini size products. They're perfect if you enjoy experimenting with new products or you can't afford the full size yet still want to own the product. 
Since they're mini, their prices are lesser than the full size, and that itself is a reason to buy. When you can't get the same item for a lesser price, of course you'll choose that. The thing is, when you compare the amount of product in the mini size, you realize that the full size is actually way more affordable. So there's that. Plus, let's face it, waiting in line is a boring task and customers wanna keep themselves busy while waiting their turn. Those affordable, cute little products distract them. And since they have limited time while waiting in line for their turn, they tend to buy something that grabs their attention at the last minute without even thinking twice. Not to mention all these charming makeup and skincare sets. Their beautiful packaging and of course, the concept of adding one thing to your basket and ending up with more than one product sounds like magic. Some of them even come up with a cute makeup bag, which is another encouragement to buy it. It's like the cherry on top. When you see these sets, you feel like you got a great deal. In reality, you end up buying more products than you need and there's no guarantee that you'll love what's in that set. Also, most of the time, the prices on these sets are not really logical if you think thoroughly. We can say that Sephora convinces its customers to buy mostly more than they actually need with the help of small details. They know their customers and they know how they feel about skincare and makeup products. The only thing Sephora needs to do is encourage and push its customers a little. Let's be honest here, makeup and skincare products are charming as they are. And when you see another reason to buy them, you just go for it. After sharing your own experience with Sephora in the comments below, you should watch this video because I know you'll love it too.